Oh, rookie move. Getting set up, guys. I should have done a dry run. going on Matt Snyder welcome to the live first one first person in the first one I should have started doing this like 10 minutes ago and maybe figured some of it out give it a couple minutes let some folks jump on here Borchers, Texas Farm. What's going on, Borchers? Well, how fun is this? All right, guys, I'm trying to set up the uh, the Instagram live real quick, and then we'll uh, we'll get going. We'll give away some syrup. Hope everybody's having a great Monday. I think today's Monday. Let's see, live. There we go. Oh man, live in two places at once. Okay. Shannon, what's going on? Let's see if we can't get the uh Questions pulled up here. Everybody, what's going on? What's going on? Taylor, what's happening? Let's see. Okay. So many screens. There's this phone going on. I hijacked my work phone <laughs> to get another stream going. I'm checking it on the computer to make sure we're working. I promise it's nothing but professionals over here. Okay, put these halfway close to each other. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the farm. So, I guess we'll... uh. Thank you, Carrie. I uh, I do feel very tech tech savvy. Steve, welcome. What's going on? How how fun is this? Just like all these connections from all different sorts of uh, parts of my life, all coming together in one place. This is uh, this is really fun. Okay, well, I guess uh, maybe I'll just jump straight into some questions. And if you have any, I will uh, I'll try to pay attention to what's going on in the chat here and. Uh, if you got some more, I'll answer them while we're doing it. And then I'll try to not get too long-winded. Maybe we'll go 10, maybe 15 minutes um, answering some questions. And then we'll get down to why everybody's here. We'll give some syrup away. So, got the syrup bottle handy. We're going to be doing three of those. Got some pins handy. We'll be handing some pins out too. I, uh, I'm a little disappointed in myself that... Uh, I got my YouTube going vertical and not horizontal right now. I guess I missed that uh, missed that when I was setting it up. Rookie move, rookie move, but for next time. Okay. So, first question. Shannon asked me, she asked me, what inspired me to become a farmer? Um, so this is kind of an odd story because it wasn't on purpose. It wasn't at all what I set out to do. Um, so I knew for a very long time that I definitely wanted to do some type of homesteading. Um, I knew I wanted some land, I knew I wanted to try to raise some kind of animals, but in my mind that was probably more like, hey, let's try to get five acres, let's try to maybe get a couple of chickens, were kind of the, kind of the thought. And um, I just so happened to stumble, stumble across the farm. I live, currently this is really close to my parents' house, so uh, 
I actually had gone over to my parents. I was going to show my dad a piece of property I'd found on Zillow and see if he would go look at it with me. And as we were scrolling to try to find that piece of property on Zillow, we saw the uh, the for sale posting for this place. And we thought that's really close uh, to where to where my parents live. You know, we haven't seen a for sale sign. We hadn't uh, hadn't uh, heard of. Um, you know, as we were looking online, hadn't seen anything online posted about it, hadn't seen a for sale sign at the street, and the place looked really cool. So we uh, we called the realtor up and we came and looked at it, and lo and behold, it uh, it actually all ended up working out. So uh, there were actually, I think, five people that had offers in ahead of me, and they all had to fall through. So it, uh, it kind of was meant to be. So that's pretty long-winded. Um, don't know if it really explained why I became a farmer, but I kind of just uh, fell into it. I would tell you at this point, personally, what I'm doing here is more of like homesteading. Um, but there are, and I think this is a question even that I'll, I'll address a little bit later. I sublet about eight acres, eight or nine acres, I believe, to a neighbor who grows rotating corn and soybeans. So this is. Um, there is some, you know, a bit larger scale, like monocrop type farming that goes on here. Just I don't have a lot of involvement with it at this point. So, uh, next question. Man, 10 people in here. How fun is this? Uh, did you grow up on a farm or do you ever think that you'd own one as an adult? So we kind of talked about that a little bit already. Yeah, Shannon, five offers had to fall through before, uh, before it got to me. So... It uh, it was meant to be. What's going on, Wayne? Welcome, Wayne. Uh, so did I grow up on a farm? No, I did not. I was born on a farm. My parents actually lived on a farm when I was born, but uh, did not live there long enough for me to have any uh any memories of living on the farm. It was actually a a big horse farm, and um, my dad had to do um. I don't know, I'm just going to throw out a number, whatever, 20 hours of work a week or a month or something. And that's what paid the rent to live in the house on the farm. So they had to do uh, chores around the farm. There were a handful of houses that were there. And uh, that was the setup. So uh, my brother lived there and I lived there. It was before my sister was born. And uh, like I said, I don't have any memories of living in that house. I must have been just a couple years old by the time that uh, they moved to the farm. So... Uh, was born on one, but did not grow up on one. I am a suburbs boy. Did, uh, did not grow up in the country. Didn't grow up doing any of this kind of stuff. So it has all been kind of a learn on the fly. Lots of, uh, lots of YouTube university, lots of reading, and lots and lots of making mistakes and having to learn from the mistakes. Oh, Wayne, don't be sorry you're late, man. Okay, looking at a couple of questions over here. Fortress Texas Farm asks, can you store maple syrup indefinitely? So kind of yes, kind of no. Um, so in my experience, there isn't anything in the maple syrup that should spoil because all it is is straight sugar. And as long as you're putting it into a clean bottle and you're bottling it hot, you should be able to store it for a good long time. The only issues that I have ever had with my syrup is mold growing on the top, getting like a film of mold growing on top of the syrup. Um, I don't know about the science behind that. I know it has something to do with pH. Um, honey does not mold and honey sugar content wise is about the same thing as maple syrup. I don't know why honey um, won't mold, but maple syrup can. So you got to be very careful to make sure that you're keeping like the top of your bottle clean, making sure that nothing's getting in it. Because if it gets contaminated, it can mold. And I think that's really the only way that it can spoil. Um, fresh maple syrup, like what I make, there's nothing in it that can go bad that I'm aware of once it cooks. I have bottles of syrup that uh, are in my, my fridge from last year still. So uh, as long as you're properly bottling and uh, properly storing. I keep it in the fridge. I don't know if that helps a lot, but uh, I would tell you that, yeah, it doesn't go bad. Steve, the, uh, the Bee Dad collab is coming soon. My brother and I, my brother actually runs a little YouTube channel, Bee Dad, B-E-E-X-D-A-D. -E -E uh, he started doing uh, 
Well, taking on becoming a uh, an apiarist, I believe it's called, of being a beekeeper last year. He got his first hive, and uh, he dove right into learning all about beekeeping. And we have a couple more hives coming um, the end of this month, actually, about three weeks away. So we will be getting bees started here at the farm this month. So be on the lookout for those videos. Be on the lookout for that collab, and go follow my brother, Bee Dad, B E E X D A D. Show him a little bit of love. What else is going on? I don't know, Wayne. I really don't know a lot about that. Wayne, at, Wayne mentioned you know maybe it has to be something to do with the uh, the honey isn't cooked. I don't know. I be I believe it's something to do with pH. Um, but that's about as far as I can point you in that direction. Um, my buddy Joe from Youngblood Family Farm, he's up there in Michigan. We're, uh, we're sugaring buddies. Uh, I bounce a lot of ideas off of him. He's, uh, he's been doing this a little bit longer than I have. He said that he's had mold once, and uh, he just scraped it right off the top, heated his syrup up, and called it a day. So I don't think that that really has to be a big worry. I know that's right. It doesn't last forever here either. That's what I always tell people whenever they get syrup from me. I tell them, use it. They say, well, how long will it last? I say, longer than it'll take for you to use it. Just use it. Enjoy it. It's fresh. It's delicious. Once you start, you're just going to use it up. I like to put it in my coffee. Of course, you know, there's all the, the classic stuff, you know, putting it on pancakes and French toast and waffles and all that. But I like to put a little dash of it in my coffee. I think that's pretty delectable. A couple people have told me that they like to use it, uh, folks that I've sold syrup to, they put it in cocktails instead of like simple syrup for uh, for some sweetener and some cocktails. I haven't tried that yet, but I could see that going well, you know, with maybe a little like bourbon drink or something. That probably would be pretty good. Okay, let me get back to my question list. Taylor asked me, uh, what do you think has been the most challenging part of farm life so far and what has been the most rewarding? I'd tell you the most challenging part has probably been learning to be adaptable. I have a little bit of like a, uh, a perfectionist kind of personality. Uh, if you watch some of my syrup videos, you know, I did a, a vlog uh, a few weeks ago talking about how I needed to forgive myself for not achieving the goals that I had set out. Um, I can get a little bit tough on myself, a little bit down on myself sometimes for not um, for not achieving like the goal that I set out for up front. And uh, I used to be a whole lot worse. So that's probably been the most challenging thing to overcome so far is just getting used to failure because it's uh, it is definitely a part of it. And uh, the most rewarding part of it, um, the maple syrup has been really rewarding. That's I really am into the, the projects that are like the syrup where it's hard and fast for a month, a couple of months, and then it's on to the next thing. I think that's a little bit of my, my ADHD personality. Um, I don't love having to focus on one thing for indefinitely. I like, I can give something my focus, but I can't do it for six months at a time. Um, I learned that trying to do my big gardens every year. I have a hard time dedicating that much time and focus to, uh, to the garden. So um, you'll be seeing some videos about that probably here soon, but the garden is gonna look a whole lot different for me this year than it has in years past. So yeah, the syrup's been really rewarding. All the construction projects that we've done, the chicken coop, um, considering we did not, my dad and I did not really have a plan. Uh, we knew, I bought chickens and we knew we had to get a coop built and we had about six weeks to do it. So uh, just started watching YouTube videos. Um, if you're in like the homesteading world, uh, you probably have seen some of the Carolina coops that are online that are just completely over the top. Uh, kind of designed mine off of a Carolina coop, stole a lot of ideas from them, but it was the my chicken coop videos that kind of grew my channel, I think. Um, my chicken videos still move the needle a whole lot more than anything else does. The syrup videos do okay, but it's the, the chicken videos that do crazy. Uh, my video on predator-proofing the chicken coop, um, that video alone has more than double, maybe triple, quadruple the views of all of my other videos put together. Uh, it's creeping up on 400,000 views, which is pretty unbelievable. 
But uh, that's the part of it that I did the most research in when I was building the chicken coop was how do I predator proof it? So it makes sense that that is the, the video of mine that has done the best. But I would say out of all the builds, the chicken coop is probably the build that was uh, the most satisfying. But I mean, even just like building a little garden shed, uh, I don't think I did a video about that, but I know I did some Instagram posts. Building a little garden shed, um, setting up the, the wood shop, setting up the syrup shop. I really love doing all that kind of stuff. When you start with something, when you start with nothing and you finish with something, that's where I get my satisfaction. I like the uh, I like the tangible result at the end. Okay, what else do we got going on here? Up North Adventure asked me, what would you suggest in looking for a syrup evaporator? I don't know that I can bring you a ton of expertise because I've only ever had one purpose-built syrup evaporator and it's not a name brand or anything it is just a we found a guy on craigslist who is a retired welder and he uh he just makes them so i went from using a steam pan inside of a file cabinet that we cut the hole out of the top of put a hinge on one of the drawers and just fed wood into the bottom drawer and boiled it off that way to the next year which was last year and this year i had the the purpose-built um, it's kind of designed off of like a, a leader, I think was the, the brand name that he kind of looked at pictures of and stuff. But it's some things that you would need to consider. Um, do you want to do a continuous flow pan or do you want to do a batch pan? If you're just starting, I would say maybe the, uh, the batch pan would be the way to go. It probably would, uh, it's a little bit, it's a little bit less involved. I have a continuous flow, flow pan and I have not figured out how to use it right yet with a continuous flow flow pan there's baffles in it so as it as it works its way through the pan you should be able to draw off syrup as you're still adding sap to it um now granted i won't lie to you i haven't put a ton of effort into figuring out how to use my continuous flow pan <laughs> the correct way but i use mine i have only ever used mine as a batch pan i've kind of tried to do a couple of little draw offs before but haven't put a ton of effort into it that is my big goal for next year is to be able to use the, uh, the continuous flow pan the correct way. The other thing you probably want to consider is uh, how many taps are you going to have? Do you, so you need to have a tray that will support the number of taps that you're going you're gonna to have out in your sugar bush. Um, I don't know those numbers off the top of my head, but I do remember that's very easy to find online. Uh, if you just go online and um, if you look at those, those retailers, they probably tell you what their 2x4 pan supports, what their 2x6 pan supports, or you probably could just get a quick answer off of Google as well. But you're going to want to consider um, that your pan is going to fit the, uh, the scale of your operation. How do you like your leader pan, Matt? Matt says that's what Matt Snyder says that's what he uses. How do you like it? So uh, Up North Adventure read your comment Wayne this year I don't know exactly how many trees I tapped but I had 88 taps uh, most of the um, most of the trees that I did had two some had three a few had one so I would tell you somewhere in the ballpark of 40 to 50 trees is uh, the number of trees that I tapped this year I matched last year's production this year I had about double the taps but I matched last year's production. It was a much shorter season this year. Um, late February, well, maybe mid-February, we had nice weather for the, the sap to start running. I went ahead and tapped. And then, um, yeah, I think you're right, Wayne. I think that's right in the ballpark. Uh, I tapped somewhere around the middle of February. We had great weather for it. I had two good days of run, and then we froze solid here in Cincinnati again. And for 10 days, we were froze solid. So by the time we thawed out again, we uh, by the time we thawed out, uh, it was close to spring. We had three great weeks of flow. I mean, just, just tremendous. But then uh, the trees budded, and that's all there was to it. Obi Wan Kenobi wants to know if I'm going to do uh, all those taps again. I don't know yet. <laughs> that was a lot of uh, of carrying five gallon buckets in and out of the woods. I would like to match that, but 
I'm hoping to be able to figure out a gravity system. I've got a couple of places where I'm perfectly set up to do like a gravity vacuum system down to a large uh, collection containers. That's a lot of taps, Matt, 100. <laughs> That's a lot of taps. Uh, I'm trying to do uh, come up with some way. I got a great hillside with a lot of trees on it that would all shed downhill to one. If I can figure out a way to do that, I would like to get to that 100 plus taps. But I would tell you that I am about at my physical limit uh, at these 88 taps of being able to carry around and load them all in and out of buckets, in and out of the trailer, hauling them all back up here, hauling them into the barn, hauling them into the sugar shop. It was a lot of physical work. I was pretty beat up by the, uh, by the end of sugar season. Cam, you got to stick around. No, uh, we're not announcing the winners till the end, so you got to stick around, man. You do all those by yourself, Matt? You do 100 taps by yourself? That's a lot. How do you carry them out of the woods? On a four-wheeler? Or do you have a vacuum system, like a gravity system? How are you pulling them all out of the woods every day? What else do we got? Tractor. Okay, yeah. That's the way to do it. That would be a lot of manpower. Oh, Wayne, how did you know that was going to be like the, uh, the next question I was going to get to here? Yeah, Amanda, I believe Amanda is from the UK, all the way from across the pond. She had a few questions for me. Uh, she asked about subletting the land. I, I talked about that. We'll touch on that again. I do sublet some acreage to a neighbor, and uh, he does rotating corn and soybeans. Uh, we had corn last summer, so I'm, uh, I'm assuming that he will be uh, planting soybeans again here sometime in the next uh, several weeks. He'll be getting that rocking and rolling. Um, she also asks, do I rely on city work? Yes, I have a regular full-time job outside of, a, outside of my farm life. So I work in uh, facilities maintenance for a school district. So um, we do electric, we do plumbing, we do floors, we do ceilings, we paint. Uh, basically, if, if something goes wrong at the school, yeah, city work, right? <laughs> Maybe that's the British term. Um, yeah, so I, I do that for a school district, which has been uh, a great boon for me personally, because I get to learn how to do all of these sort of things, and I get to do it on their time and their dime. So I've gotten to learn uh, lots of basic plumbing, you know, how to unclog plumbing. Unfortunately, that's a big part of it. But, uh, Okay, I'll get to that in a second, Carrie. Um, got to learn how to do lots of basic plumbing, lots of basic electrical, carpentry, all this sort of stuff. I get to practice at work and then come home and do it at home because we did a big, uh, big home remodel. The, uh, the old farmhouse here was built in 1914, and there are parts of an original cabin that are inside of the house. I should actually do a video on that. That's pretty cool. In the attic, there is parts of the old original cabin that's here, and it still has the shake shingles on there's a, the, a piece of the peak of the roof and down excuse me down in the basement it's really almost more of a cellar but uh down in the basement there are the the floor joists that hold up this floor that i'm sitting on are the timbers still have bark on them so you can see the uh the saw marks from where they they cut the timber in the big sawmill that is actually still here i'll have to show you guys that too sometime um, the remains of the old sawmill, but yeah, it's actually bark on the, the timbers that are holding up the, the first floor. So Carrie in the, uh, Carrie Ware asked me, her and her girls want to know, how many eggs do my, my girls, how many eggs do the chickens lay every day, uh, every day or week? So... Production is starting to pick back up because the, the weather's getting nice again and the days are getting longer again. So egg production is actually dictated by the day length. You would think that it might be um, by the weather, you know, like it's cold in the winter so they don't lay. Sort of, yes, but the, the egg production actually slows down in the winter because the days get shorter. And that's what tells the chicken circadian rhythms that this is not the time of year that we want to be reproducing. So egg production cuts a lot in the winter. Okay, we're back. Uh, about five in the morning. Um, probably only keep that going for another few weeks off, but that fools them into thinking the days are longer. But most of the varieties that I have lay five to six eggs a week. So right now I have 25 uh, birds out in the coop. I have 25 mature laying hens. 
And right now I am getting between 14 to 18 eggs a day at peak production. Once we get to the summer, last year at peak production, I was getting uh, 20, 19, 20 to 22, 23 eggs a day. So you almost get, with the breeds that I have, it differs by breed, with the breeds that I have, it's almost an egg every day, five or six eggs a week. That's pretty good production, Wayne. Is it PETA? Is that how you say it? PETA? PETA Tompkinson. Uh, yeah, most of the chickens get along. I have a pretty big coop, so they, uh, they don't too much pick at each other. Uh, there is definitely an established pecking order. That's a real thing. Um, the, the, the phrase pecking order comes from chickens. There is an alpha chicken out there and there is an order from alpha all the way down to the, to, I guess the, uh, the beta chicken. So, uh, they do get along for the most part, but, uh, if you spend some time outside, you definitely hear some squawks. They will peck at each other. They will let each other know, Hey, I don't like what you're doing, but, uh, I don't have any real issues. I don't have any problems with, uh, them tearing feathers out of each other, at least not, not major problems. So yeah, and there's 11 more. I have 11 Isa Browns that are in the barn right now in the brooder boxes. And they probably will get another two or three weeks out in the barn before they're big enough that they'll be able to uh, come outside because got to make sure that it's warm enough um, for them to come outside. They don't need that supplementary heat anymore. I haven't talked this much in forever. Woo! Where we live in Texas, we naturally do not have maple trees growing, so no local maple syrup is possible. Yeah, it's just not the right weather for it down there. But you guys have those uh, those cool live oaks, though. My brother lived in Texas for uh, for eight or nine years, and it is just, every time I'd go down there, it is completely different um, flora. Yeah, I guess that'd be the flora. Completely different plants down there. Uh, where, where I live in the Midwest, in Ohio, uh, the trees grow big and tall. Um, Around here, we have white oaks and red oaks. They grow big and tall, and they're trying to reach up to the top of the canopy. I noticed in Texas, there's all those cool live oak trees. They're big and sprawling. I always thought that those were so cool. Don't know if they have them in the part of Texas that you're in, but I always thought the live oaks were the coolest thing around, uh, around Austin, where my brother lived. Six eggs from six hens. That's pretty good. Let's see, did I miss any questions? Uh, are you raising a family? No, no kids yet. Do have a serious girlfriend. Shout out to you, Taylor. You better be tuned in. You better be one of these 12 people on here right now. Uh, shout out to Taylor. Uh, do have a serious girlfriend, but uh, no kids yet at this point. Uh, how many acres? Shenana Farm is 49 and some chain acres. Uh, we have... We have pasture, we have tilled land, um, there's some old growth forest, there's some newer growth forest, there's lots and lots of hills, there's pretty serious elevation change here, lots of, uh, lots of, lots of rolling hills, um, there's a wetland, um, we have a natural spring on the property here that's pretty cool. One of the projects that I'm hoping to get to this year is building a spring house down at the natural spring, so uh, hopefully be doing a video series about that. Real excited for that one. Um, I believe it is an artesian spring is how it has been explained to me. So it is uh, actually tapped into the the Great Miami Aquifer is what, what feeds it, which is the aquifer that uh, the drinking water for like this entire um, tri-state area, you know, Ohio, Kentucky, Indiana. It's where uh, most of our drinking water comes from. No maple trees in Australia, huh? Uh, what are some long and short-term goals? Actually, I have this. I pulled it down off of the fridge. My 2021 goals, I wrote these out, I don't know, three or four weeks ago. Um, I'm a big believer. What works best for me is if, uh, if it's in my head, I got to put it on paper to make it real. Big believer in to-do lists, big believer in goal lists. Um, it helps me keep myself accountable and yeah, I feel like if, if I say it, if I see it, then it needs to happen more than if it's just floating around in my head. So my big goals, 
call these my short short term short term goals for this year is I want to get an orchard going. Um, so I want to get maybe the first 10 to 15 trees planted <clears throat> and continue that over the next few years. Um, maybe try to get to 30 or 40 trees. Nothing too crazy, but uh, definitely a significant significant orchard. I think it'd be real fun to be able to do like a uh, pick your own fruit days kind of thing in the fall. And I think the orchard kind of falls in line. If you were around here earlier when I was talking about, um, I like the, you know, the, the, where it's for a few weeks, this is what I'm doing. So, you know, I plant these trees, they grow, there's a harvest later on in the year. It's not constant upkeep to them. Um, I want to do meat chickens. That's on my list for this year. I want to do 10 to 15 meat birds for the first time. So I want to build a chicken tractor and have like a mobile chicken tractor that I can pull around so they are on fresh grass and fresh bugs every single day. Uh, the spring house, just mentioned the spring house. A stress-free garden. I don't want to stress out about my vegetable garden this year. That's one of my biggest goals. The, uh, ooh, I didn't cross it out yet. Cross it out right now in front of everybody. A successful sugar season. I'm going to cross that out. Real happy with my sugar season. Um, I want to start some wildflower gardens. I think a pick-your-own wildflower patch would be a really fun thing to do as well. Um, even if it's just to get some of my friends and family and stuff to come out to the farm, and it's not something that I do uh, commercially at first, I think that that'd be a real fun thing to get folks out to the farm, um, especially with the, all the COVID stuff wrapping up. You know, there's a lot of people that I haven't seen in a long time, lots of family, lots of friends. And uh, let's get them on out here to the farm. Let's get them picking some flowers. But I'd like to do that commercially at some point too. Um, let's see, two more. I would like to learn how to turn wood on a lathe. I was given a lathe a few months ago. Um, I've always been fascinated by, uh, by wood turning, but uh, I want to learn to turn wood. I want to try my hands at making some pens, and I want to, uh, you know, I guess, whatever else you could wood turn. I don't think I'm ready to start making like a table or anything yet, but I would like to learn to wood turn. Maybe a bowl. A bowl would probably be an easy project. Um, and the last one is I want to start with um, the honeysuckle abatement on my property. So there aren't a ton of invasive plant species in Ohio, but um, a mirror honeysuckle is the worst one, at least for where I live. There's also something called tree of, par par tree of paradise, but there's not a lot of that that grows around here. But I want to start working on significantly abating the honeysuckle off of my property. It has taken over a lot of the, uh, the undergrowth and eventually would probably start to threaten some of the health of my, uh, my woodlands and my forest. So I want to, uh, I want to start, start getting rid of some of that honeysuckle. So those are my short-term goals. Some long-term goals, I'd like, to, uh, I'd like to get a pond in. I have a pond now, but I would like to get another pond in eventually. I have a great swale of land where I, we could just build a dam and uh, could pretty easily get a pond going. I like to fish, and I would love to be able to fish here at the property. Um, some other long-term goals. Oh, the honeybees. The honeybees will get started here soon. Forgot to put that on my list of goals for this year. Yeah, Wayne, the honeysuckle is just terrible. Um, get some farm help. Got to get a family going here at some point. Going to have to uh, make my farm girlfriend, my farm wife here before too long, I suppose. Going to have to get that going. Um, yeah, just keep, keep setting the roots. And... Uh, yeah, I'm more of a, a day by, well, I mean, not day by day kind of guy, but I'm not great at forecasting into the, the long range future. Let's see, I think that might have been the last one. Oh, no, I saved this one for last because I like this one a lot. Carrie asked me, um, what wildlife have you seen on the farm lately? And update us on the beavers. Have <laughs> That's funny, Joe. <laughs> uh, update us on the beavers. Did you ever see any? No, I have not. <laughs> I have not seen the beavers. Um, I've only been back down there a couple of times, and uh, 
not knowing, research has told me that I need to get down there. It's uh, sunrise and sunset or when the beavers are active. And it's usually like the afternoons that I've gone down there. But I do need to get back down there. And I need to get back down there with the camera because... Oh, no, that was not a proposal. Don't worry. <laughs> I need to get back down there with the camera because uh, there is even another dam than there was the time before. And it's pretty unbelievable how many more trees they've been able to cut down. Just a quick list, though, of uh, wildlife that I do see all the time around here. I always see wild turkeys. Um, there are always... Um, turkey buzzards around. There's a couple of big old red tail hawks that fly around here. Um, they have a nest back in the woods that I actually found. Um, the leaves are out now. I probably couldn't show it to you now, but uh, maybe in the fall I'll remember to get some pictures or something of the big hawk nest that's back in the woods. We have Cooper's hawks around here. Un unbelievable numbers of deer. Um, there are... Um, when the soybeans are in the field, it's not uncommon for me to be able to look out of the window and see 30 to 40 deer uh, in my field and in the, uh, they're kind of tiered in the, uh, in the neighbor's field that kind of sits down below mine. 30 or 40 deer is not uncommon. There was one night where I counted 52 deer out in the field, both, uh, both d bucks and uh, doe. There's some pretty unbelievable trophy bucks that uh, I've gotten on some of my trail cameras that I've actually seen around the farm before. Um, coyotes, I don't see them a lot, but I hear the coyotes all the time and I'm always getting pictures of them on my trail cams. Um, uh, what else? My neighbor's dog, I get my neighbor's dog on my trail cams all the time <laughs> back in the woods. I've seen a couple of foxes. Uh, there's a big snapping turtle that lives down in my pond. Geese, ducks, uh, seen a couple of banded coots. Had to look that one up in the old bird identifier book. That's like a little mini duck. It's all black with a white ring around its neck. A banded coot. That was pretty cool. Uh, saw a bald eagle one time. Just the one time. But that was really neat. Um, not in the part of the country that I live in. We don't have territorial birds. But there were, uh, there were some pretty territorial squirrels when I went to, uh, when I went to college. Saw some people get dive bombed by some squirrels before. Um, of course, yeah, red squirrels, gray squirrels. There's lots and lots of wildlife out here. I'm waiting for the Holy Grail. I have a bunch of trail cams. I have five trail cams set up back in the woods. There have been rumors of not very far from me, folks seeing a bobcat. I would love to get a picture of a bobcat. They're uh, in Oxford, which is about 40 minutes from here. A friend of mine sent me some pictures that her neighbor got on like a, it was like a ring camera or something of a, a bobcat walking through their backyard. So that's only about 40 minutes from here. That's not very far for uh, an animal like that to, uh, to cover. I'm going to get down there, Carrie. I'm going to get down there. We're going to do another beaver update. Haven't seen them, but I'm going to get down there. Maybe I'll even sneak one of my trail cameras down there. That's not quite my property, but uh, maybe I can find a place to hide one of the trail cams and see if we can't get a couple of fun pictures if we, uh, if we can't get them on video. So I think that was all of the questions. Oh man, I've been going for 40 minutes. Somebody told me to shut up for a minute. Goodness gracious. Let's do some, uh, let's draw some names for some syrup. So we're gonna do three, uh, three bottles of syrup. Three people are gonna get bottles of syrup and you'll also get a pin with your bottle of syrup. Get that to focus there, there. And then we'll, uh, I'll do three more pins um, as sort of little, uh, little consolation prizes. This has been really fun. And make sure I didn't miss any questions real quick. I asked about the deer. Oh, black bears, that's pretty crazy, Wayne. You're in Tennessee, right? Southeast Tennessee? I don't know. Can you, can you mail liquids over overseas? I don't know. It's like getting on an airplane. You can only send three ounces. All right, y'all. Let's go for it. So there were, uh, I believe there were 39 entrants. So one in 39 chance. 
I hope it's somebody on the live. That'd be really fun. Okay, first name. Fravel McCaney. F-R-A-V-E-L-M-C-H-A-N-E-Y. Fravel McCaney. McCheney. Are you on here? If you're not, I'm going to leave um, in, I guess in the comments, I will leave my email address. It's just shinyatafarm at gmail.com. Reach out to me there and we will figure out how to get you your syrup. All right, let me write this one down. Fravel. Fravel? McCaney. Syrup. All right, big money, big money, big money. Name number two in the uh, official Shinyata hat, by the way. Joe, I know you were asking about merch. I have been doing some research into getting some merch. Um, I am trying to find both decent quality and halfway affordability. So just trying out a couple of different places. We have done a couple of one-offs. I don't know which one. Which one do you guys like more? Do you like the... Uh, do you like the leather patch or do you like the uh, the stitched? The stitch did not come out with anywhere near as much detail as the leather patch did. And uh, also did this shirt as a one-off. The big issue I've been, I've been having is my logo has six colors in it. So while this does look really good, it uh, it's really expensive to do something screen printed in six colors. So uh, working on doing, trying to do something monochrome like I did on the syrup bottle. You know, just in one color. It just doesn't quite pop as much. I don't know. Maybe I need to quit being so picky. Okay, number two. Barry Adamson. So Barry is actually the man that I bought the farm from. And he has a YouTube channel where he did some fun videos. So if you type his name, Barry Adamson, into YouTube, you can find some fun old videos older videos from here at the farm and you can see a little bit what this place looked like before I got my mitts on it and started changing everything. So Barry, you are the winner. All right, let's do another one. Stevens R C, S T E P H E N S R period C period. You are the third winner. You know what, y'all? I'm having so much fun. Let's do two more. Let's do two more. Who's it going to be? Is it going to be you? Is it going to be you? Is it going to be you? Oh, Shannon Flurry. On here. Shannon, you're going to get some syrup. All right, y'all, last one. Last one. Well, we still got to do the pins, but last, last syrup. No peeking. No peeking. Who's it going to be? Nicholas Whalen. I think it's Whalen. W H A L E N. Nicholas Whalen. You get some syrup, my friend. And like I said, guys, just send me an email, shinyatafarm at gmail.com, and we will get figured out how to get these sent to you. All right, let's get some pins. Let's get some pins going. Save the Republic. Got a pin coming your way. You guys have been following the channel for a while. I don't think that you're on the live, but uh, you guys have been interacting with the channel for quite a while, 
And uh, I do appreciate it. Not quite as long as you, though, Wayne. I think out of everybody that I don't know personally, I think you have been the person that has been interacting with me the longest on here. And I appreciate you. So save the Republic. They get a pin. All right, two more. Oh, the Hutzel House of Music. Now, unless I'm mistaken, I believe that this would be my pal, uh, Chrissy Hutzel, who actually used to give me tuba lessons. So, little known fact about your boy Steven, I am actually quite the tuba player. So, uh, maybe we'll have to do a tuba video sometime. So, Hutzel House of Music, you got a pin coming your way. All right, last one. Pita, what is Pavlova? Is that the thing that you sent me? I think you may have suggested that in a comment, and I had to Google it, but I don't remember what it was. Last one, B. Lang. B-L-A-N-G. So B. Lang, you got a pin coming your way. An Australian dessert. Huh. Dessert with eggs. Well, guys, this was a whole lot of fun. Um, I know a whole lot of you have asked and have even offered to buy syrup from me. I do have a few bottles of syrup left. So if you would be interested in purchasing a bottle of syrup, I don't have any idea what uh, what shipping and stuff is at this point. I'll get that all figured out when, uh, when I get figured out how we're going to send the... Uh, the syrup bottles to the winners. It's probably going to be uh, some of those like USPS flat rate boxes. I imagine that's going to be the easiest, most cost effective way to do it. So uh, if you are also interested and you, uh, you wouldn't mind purchasing some syrup and uh, dealing with some shipping costs, leave, uh, also send me an email that, uh, that you would be interested in doing that. Again, that's shenyatafarm at gmail.com, C-H-A-N-Y-A-T-A. Uh, F-A-R-M, Farm at gmail.com if you'd be interested in buying a couple of bottles. Uh, see, I don't, have, I don't have a ton of them left, but uh, if you are interested, and like I said, you wouldn't mind uh, having a little bit of shipping cost on there as well, we will make that happen. So uh, this actually was a lot more fun and a lot smoother than I expected it to be. Um, didn't expect to talk for 50 minutes, but uh, I can be a little bit long-winded. So, uh, yeah, congrats to all the winners. Thank you all for hopping on here with me. This was really a lot of fun. Maybe this is something that we can do again in the future. I guess I didn't look at any of the Instagram comments. <laughs> so, yeah. I, uh... <laughs> Steve says he was listening while he was at the grocery store. Appreciate it, Steve. I'm glad you stayed awake for it. Um, oh, I did see one question that I didn't get to that I just thought of. Who are some of the other YouTubers that I follow? Um, in terms of this space, um, if you're into the syrup stuff, you definitely need to go check out my boy Joe Youngblood. Uh, I believe that is YB Family Farm. He does, he has his own little DIY syrup setup as well. He does a good job, and I think he drops lots of, uh, lots of good info on his. He's got a good video about his uh, RO setup, his reverse osmosis setup. Definitely go check him out. Um, I like what a lot of the videos that I like are um, like the machinist kind of guys almost. Like I don't watch a ton of the the farm stuff. Uh, I watch the Lumna Acres guy a little bit. I watch some Justin Rhodes. Um, I watch the uh, the Polyface Farm stuff that I'm sure a lot of you guys follow. I go to those for uh, for information. But um, I like this old Tony. I like AVE. He does like uh, he does real fun tool reviews, real inappropriate fun tool reviews. Um, yeah, those are, Project Farm. I like him a lot. I go. I don't know if you guys ever watch Project Farm. He does a lot of great comparison videos um, on everything. I mean, gloves, 
I think his latest one was he compared a bunch of different brands of gloves. Uh, he's done screws, tools, anything you can think of. He does like head to head comparisons. His stuff is really good. Um, yeah, I'm kind of all over the place with what I watch, but, uh, you watch me. That's all that matters. I appreciate each and every one of you. Thanks for tuning in. Um, this was a lot of fun. Definitely we'll do this again. Don't know what the, uh, the topic will be. Uh, thanks for bearing with me. It took me a little while to hit some technical difficulties there at the beginning. Um, yeah, appreciate you guys. Until next time, y'all. We'll see you. This is awkward now. I don't know how to turn it off.